prominently placed. In the elements panel on the left side, you find a tab filled with shapes. What can you do with them? Well, you can create a page like this, for example. Let me show you how. All right, let's start a new page to begin. And before we dive into the shapes menu, I'm going to change the background color. And I've prepared a few colors for the purpose of the tutorial in my saved colors. And I'm going to pick this gradient as a background. And if you're interested in these colors, you'll find the values in the description. All right, let's take a look at the shapes. Currently, there are 12 different shapes available. Uh, we have a rectangle, a circle, a triangle, and so on. And keep an eye out because in the next weeks, there are going to be more shapes added to this. If I click on a shape, it will be added to the page. And for now, this doesn't look like much. But these shapes are vector based, meaning that I can scale them up and down as much as I like. And you can scale the shapes by dragging with the mouse or if you want to be clinically precise by changing the values in the size and position menu. And if I want to change this rectangle into a line, for example, I have to unlock the aspect ratio right here. And then I can just drag it and drag it. And as I said, if I want to be more precise, I can change the height value here to something like two and I have a thin line. Let's actually make this four. And this can be useful if you want to use the shapes as design elements in the background, for example, or if you just want to create a thin line. And of course, you can also change the color of a shape. Let me grab another one. I'm going to pick this hexagon here. And if you want to change the color, you have to make sure that you click the shape then you can either pick one of your saved colors or you can scroll down to the style section of this menu and pick a color with the color picker. Since I already prepared a few saved colors, I'm not going to use the color picker, but I'm going to use this pink tone that I prepared for this. All right, and I also want to change the color of my line. So I click it and I click the color in saved colors. Now there's one more interesting thing that you can do with shapes and colors and I want to show you. So let's copy and paste this and go back to the style menu and click the color picker. And I want you to take a look at this. Here you can also apply a gradient to your shape. You have the option to apply a linear gradient or a radial gradient. And I want to show you the linear gradient right now. You see nothing happened because uh, this side of the gradient is pink and the other side of the gradient is pink as well. And if I grab this, you can see that a different color is applied on the bottom half. But what I want to do is I want to make this transparent. And in order to do that, you have to grab this handle here and just drag it down. And you'll see now that the bottom half of the shape is becoming transparent. That's exactly what I want to go for here. Another interesting thing you can do with shapes is to combine them. So for example, if I grab this rectangle from here and change the color to pink as well, and then just move it a little bit to the right, you can see that this already forms a new shape, at least if I align it correctly. And you see now it forms this kind of arrow shape or sign shape. And that's exactly what we need for the purpose of this tutorial. All right, there's one last feature that you need to know to recreate the page I showed you in the beginning. And it's one of the things I really like most about shapes. So let's copy and paste this one. And now we're going to look for an image. We click up here and type in portrait. And I'm just going to drag this one here, one click and it appears on the page. And now I can just drag it and drop it right into the shape and it automatically takes the form of the shape. And if you now want to reframe or scale your image, you can simply double click the shape and you can zoom in or adjust the framing here.
Now to separate our profile pictures a little bit more from the background, I thought it would be nice to give them a little frame. And I did that by copy and pasting another shape. And I made sure that this shape was behind our image and just adjusted the size of the image slightly. So changed the width from 159 to 150. And in this case, since the aspect ratio is locked, the height will also change. And now you can grab the image and your background hexagon and align them. And you'll get this nice little frame around the image. All right. Now let's finalize this. From here, it's a lot of copy and paste to add more shapes to our canvas or story page. And what also comes in really handy if you do this kind of thing are the align tools on the top right. And uh, these are really helpful. For example, if I want to align those shapes, I can just click align center and they'll align. And I also can distribute them vertically and they'll have the same distance between them. And that's really helpful. Okay, we are almost done, but I still want to add a little bit of text to it. So I'm gonna grab some text from the text menu and I'm going to adjust the color and change the font to rock salt. All right, and that's it, we're done. I hope this was helpful. And if you are using shapes or anything else to create cool stories in Web Stories for WordPress, let us know and post your story in the comments below. Until next time.